Hello, children, friends. This is Mayim Vega, your naturopathic herbalist and holistic life coach. And in this wellness webinar, in this holistic health and healing lesson, I'm going to talk to you about the orthomolecular approach to healing from anxiety. Now, um, the first video I made on this series for holistic healing for anxiety, um, I talked about the herbs, herbalism, the best herbs for anxiety. And in this video, we're going to talk about orthomolecular nutrition, or also known as mega dose vitamin therapy. Now, um, I'm probably not like most herbalists and health coaches that you may know of. If you know other herbalists and health coaches, most of them usually are not into um, vitamin and mineral supplements. A, there's a big difference between me and them. And um, that's one of the reasons why my title is not just herbalist or master herbalist, which is common, more common, master herbalist, but um, my title is naturopathic herbalist. And as a naturopathic herbalist, I use not only herbalism, but also other holistic um, healing methods, okay, to get people the results that they want. And one of the most powerful ones and also affordable ones that I have found is orthomolecular nutrition. Okay. And um, so what happened was when I first studied to become um, a nutrition and, and health coach, um, I, I learned a lot of things. Um, I, learned, I learned a lot of holistic health and healing principles, and I learned about a lot of toxins that we should avoid. And, um, you know, I le learned about herbalism, and I went on to study at another school for herbalism. And there were two things that I still lacked after studying at, at those two um, organizations, those two places. Um, I lacked understanding the power of vitamins and supplements, number one. And number two, I lacked understanding um, the power of using food and not just any food, because the thing is most, most herbalists and health coaching schools, they push veganism or vegetarianism. But um, there's no one size fits all model. And um, I don't believe that veganism or vegetarianism is the ideal diet for anyone permanently. It might be good for a time to, uh, to accomplish healing uh, for some things, but staying away from meat and dairy can also be very detrimental for people's health. There are a lot of people that um, contract autoimmune disorders and other problems because of staying away from meat and dairy. That's one thing. But another thing is that a lot of them also teach that, um, that vitamins and supplements are bad because they are man-made, manufactured, not natural, quote unquote natural. And my response to that is, well, they may be man-made, this is true, but that doesn't mean that they're not natural. And what I mean by natural is that the body understands what to do with these, with these substances. These substances are vitamins and minerals. They are not pharmaceuticals, which means that they are not patented which means that even though they are made by men, they are not easily, um, they're, they, sorry, excuse me, even though they are made by men, they are reproducible by easily, yeah. unlike the pharmaceutical drugs, they're not patented. Now, for example, when you juice fruits and vegetables, is that necessarily natural? No, it's not. It's not natural to drink concent uh, that concentrated amount of juice. Um, because you know you you know let's say for for a cup of carrot juice how how many carrots do you have to juice to get a cup of carrot juice and get that much raw living enzymes from carrots you have to juice a lot you have to juice so much that it would be very unnatural and maybe sometimes even impossible to eat that much carrots and achieve that same effect so my argument is that juicing is extremely powerful and effective and can be healing for many things like cancer, but it is also in some way unnatural. And that's, but it's natural in terms of your body knows what to do with it. Your body knows what to do with the juice once it's in your body, okay? And that's the same thing with vitamins. Vitamins may be man-made and in an unnatural form when it compared to food, but it's still natural in terms of 
your body knows exactly what to do with the vitamin or mineral supplement. It is still natural. It's natural as that juice. But the advantage of orthomolecular nutrition or um, supplements, you know, vitamin or mineral or other, other type of supplements, so it is, it's extremely affordable. Okay, it's more affordable than juicing and it's even more affordable than herbs. Vitamin C is, for example, um, you know, just a ton more um, cheaper, <laughs> just more affordable than getting that same amount of vitamin C from fruits and vegetables. It just is, okay? And when you need therapeutic doses of vitamin C and, you're, and you can't afford to juice that much carrots or vegetables, or you don't have enough time to, or, you know, whatever it is, vitamins are the best option. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about some powerful vitamins and minerals that you can use for anxiety. And I want to say to all the naysayers, you know what? Just don't listen to them. Just don't listen to them. They haven't studied it. They haven't studied orthomolecular nutrition. They're against it. They haven't studied it. They haven't studied the power of orthomolecular nutrition. Okay, so just don't listen to them, right? Okay, so let's go into... Um, I'm going to talk about my teacher um, in orthomolecular nutrition. And mind you, um, I studied orthomolecular nutrition when I was, um, uh, after I studied uh, holistic health coaching and nutrition and herbalism. Okay, I studied it after those things. Okay. Um, and so I had to unlearn a lot of things that I learned in my other, in my other um, programs because you know, the teachers that I had before I started learning these things were a lot of them were very much against vitamins. But um, if you are listening, if you're watching to the video for this or looking at the slides, um, on the top left, there's a photo of a man in a blue shirt. His name is Andrew Saul. He is my main, he is, he's my main teacher. Well, he is, yeah, he, he, he was the teacher for, for me when I, as I was studying orthomolecular nutrition. Andrew Saul is not a medical doctor. He's, um, he's a scientist. He has a PhD. Um, people call him Dr. Andrew Saul, but he's not a medical doctor. He's a scientist, right? Okay. And this is um, what he says in his, um, he has a, his, uh, has an article called Drugless Methods to Help Get Rid of Anxiety. Now he studied the works of um, two-time Nobel Prize winner, um, Dr. Linus Pauling, who was basically um, one of the main pioneers of ortho orthomolecular nutrition, um, a brilliant man. I don't want to go into too much about, about him. I do in some other videos. But anyways, so um, in his article, Drugless Methods to Help Get Rid of Anxiety, he says that many, many millions of prescriptions are written every year for emotional illness. And two out of three visits to family physicians are for stress-related illness. Way back in 1990, the annual cost was already $75 billion. And it is many times that today. This is, this is nationwide. More can be done for, these, for those experiencing anxiety. The more includes some good natural... Um, some good natural remedies and regular practice of a stress reduction technique. And we'll talk about that in a different lesson. But right now we're going to focus on um, mostly the vitamins. And milk, okay. Now, um, Andrew Saul, he, he knows a thing or two about stress. When he was an undergraduate at the Australian National University, his anxiety over schoolwork and being about 13,000 miles away from home at age 18 caused him actual pain. He felt... He felt it in the center of his chest and down the side. The university physician, a rather young fellow himself, did an appropriate examination and got out his prescription pad and started to write. He thought he was about to be prescribed tranquilizers, but not so. The doctor had written down the name of a book, Relief Without Drugs, by Ainsley Mears, MD. Now, this title might be difficult to find in the United States, but you can try an insurer library loan um, through a public library if you're interested. Um, but, you know, the point is he was being told to relax. He did not like that. To top it off, the doctor correctly assumed that he did not know how to relax. And he, provide, he provided a reference that he could learn. And that's part of um, 
the life coaching that um, I'll talk about in a different lesson. But anyways, the novelty of this drugless approach is what persuaded him to try it, and it worked, and the pain went away. So for the first time in his life, he had a prescription filled, not at the drugstore, but at the bookstore. Now, while studying at um, the nearby Canberra Hospital, he learned other stress reduction techniques, such as um, imaging, self-hypnosis, auto-relaxation. Um, and he also start, started learning about the power of prayer, meditation. And he also, um, he also learned about, later on, about the following alternatives to pharmaceutical sedatives and similar products, okay? First thing we're gonna talk about is niacin, okay? Ni niacin, also known as vitamin B3. Niacin is so effective against actual psychosis that half of all mental ward inmates in the South were able to be released once a depression era deficiency of this vitamin was corrected. Niacin in appropriate doses acts as a natural tranquilizer and induces relaxation or sleep. It is non-addictive, cheap, and safer than any pharmaceutical product. Dosages vary with, with condition. The best author on the subject is Abram Hoffer, MD, whose experience dates back to the early 1950s. He, he routinely gave at least as much vitamin C as he did niacin. And this somewhat reduces the flush that all persons taking supplemental niacin should expect to have. Dr. Hoffer, Harold D. Foster, and Andrew Saul wrote Niacin, the real story. This is actually recommended reading, um, no, mandatory reading for our students at um, aruka.com for our certification program. Niacin, the real story. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about the power of niacin, you can get that book. Um, it's available on audible.com um, if you'd like to listen to the audiobook. Um, so it's it's good to help you learn more, especially about, you know, tailoring the dose. But if you can't afford the book or, you know, whatever, you can also search through Andrew Saul's website at doctoryourself.com. And there's a lot of information to, about nice. Okay. So niacin or ni niacinamide, it's a form of niacin does not cause a flush. For many, it may work even better for reducing anxiety than regular nice. That's the kind that I personally take, okay, niacinamide, or flush-free niacin, or no flush niacin, okay? Now, um, the optimum dose range is not as wide as it is for ascorbic acid or vitamin C, um, and we'll talk about vitamin C later, but it is wide enough to require different recommendations for different classes of diseases. And as is always the case with nutrients, each individual must determine their own optimal level. Um, so this is done by increasing the dose until the flush or vasodilation is gone or is so slight that it's not a problem. Um, so one can start with as low a dose as 100 milligrams uh, taken three times a day after meals and gradually increase it. And then you can, um, you, uh, you can, you can, go up, up to 500 um, each dose. And, you know, often, oftentimes you can even go all the way up to 1,000 uh, milligrams or one gram per dose, um, especially in the, in the case of arthritis and schizophrenics and for alcoholics and for also some elderly patients um, do good with a higher dose. Um, so, but it's all, it's, you know, it's always good to start low with a with hundred milligrams three times daily, and just work yourself up. And the optimal dose will probably be around um, one thousand milligrams um, per dose, or more, maybe a little a little bit more. Okay, it depends on each person and their condition. So, um, no person um, should be should be given regular niacin without explaining that you know, without them understanding that that they will have a flush, which will vary in intensity from none to, to severe. Now, um, the flush is not a problem um, and you you shouldn't you shouldn't be afraid or, or worry about it, but it may be too intense for some people. Um, it was for me the first time. I took a high dose the first time. It was, it was pretty intense. Um, so, 
you know, if you if you don't want to deal with a flush, just get the flush free or no flush niacin. But to really feel what uh, you know how the niacin is reacting with your body, then don't get the flush free or no flush. Just get regular niacin. Okay. So um, also niacin is great because it's 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 very it's very affordable. Okay. So the flush when you if you do get the flush the kind of flushes, um, the flush starts in the forehead possibly, with a warning tingle, a little tingle, tingle and then it, it intensifies. And the rate of the development of the flush depends on, upon so many factors that it's kind of impossible to, to predict what course it will fall in. For me, um, because I took so much, it just kind of, I just flushed all over. I got, skin got red and hot and um, and kind of itchy, okay? Um, and it, But it went away after a while. So it's really, it's not it's not dangerous but it is very uncomfortable when it happens. Okay, but there's a lot of factors that um, that um, can can help you with a flush. For example, if you take it with a meal, um, uh, well, sorry. So if you take it with a meal, or um, if you're taking if you take an antihistamine of some sort, whether natural or 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 otherwise. Um, it will reduce the intensity of the flush, okay? Because it is um, an inflammatory response. Now, the following factors make the flush more intense, okay? If you eat a hot meal when you take, while you're taking niacin or a hot drink, or if your stomach is empty, then it will it will be stronger. Or if you um, um, if you chew the tablets and the rate at which the tablets break down into liquid is 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 faster. Um, then it, it can be more intense. So if you eat a cold meal, it's less intense, okay? Like a smoothie or something like that, cold meal. Um, or if you don't eat it, um, if, if you don't eat it on an empty stomach, if you eat it with food, cold a cold meal or food, um, then it, it'll be decreased. But if you take it on an empty stomach or a hot meal, then it would be in, increased. The, the flush would, will be increased in intensity. Um, now, from the forehead and, and, and face, the flush travels down to the rest of your body, usually stopping somewhere in the chest, but may extend to the toes. For me, I felt it all over my body, even on my legs, okay? Um, so, but if you, when you, and it's not a bad thing when you're experiencing the flush, you just know that it's working and perhaps you want to, you know, not take it with um, with an empty stomach or something like that, or take a lower dose and work your, way, work your way up. Now with continued use, the flush gradually recedes and eventually may only be just a slight tingling sensation in the forehead. But if the person stops taking the vitamin for a day or more, the sequence of flushing will be re-experienced. Now some people will never, will never experience a flush and a few will only begin to flush after several years after taking the vitamin. Okay, so there. If you take the flush-free or no flush kind, then you will never get a flush. If you're not interested in having that, um, if if you're not in, interested in, in experiencing it, you know, the, taking the full experience, and you just want to get the health benefits, then you you can just um, you know start low, and um, just increase the dosage until you until you feel good and um, and also when when you when you know, if you get the flush free kind, then you will still know when you hit your upper limit, when you've had enough, because you'll start experiencing nausea. And if you, if you, um, if you take too, too much then you'll start vomiting and that's also okay, because that is your body's natural way of telling you that you've taken too much. But you know, if you take the flush free kind, you never get that high, then you'll just never feel anything at all. Um, and you, maybe you don't want to take the maximum amount and you just know and you feel good with um with just a you know with whatever amount that you are comfortable with you just start low and increasing it to you know up to a thousand you know just increase it every day until you get to a thousand um milligrams um, per dose and you might feel great there and that's it you know you can just stop if you want to but if you want to really find the upper limit and how much your body can really handle and really probably needs, and you then you would have to get the um, the kind of flushes. Okay, um, I've switched to the flush free kind. I'm fine with um, 
with not experiencing and not finding my upper limit, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, and I just feel good at, a, you know, at the dose that I, that I do take. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> when children first, um, when children first take uh, niacin, their, their first indication that they have had enough is that they may just lose their appetite. They're not eating the way that they normally would. Okay. Um, and so if that happens, um, I would just stop giving, you know, my child uh, the vitamin for a few days and then resume it at a lower level. Okay, that's what Andrew Saul teaches. Very few can take more than six grams or 6,000 milligrams per day. Now we're talking about adults, very few. So, you know, once you get up there, once you get um, over a thousand, you know, you, you, pro- you won't need to go past 5,000 usually, okay? Um, unless, for example, you're schizophrenic. When you're schizophrenic, then you really need 30 grams or 30,000 milligrams in order to um, take a dose of niacin that will really be effective and therapeutic for your situation. And it is very powerful. If you read the book, you'll see how powerful it is and how much it really helps people with all sorts of mental health issues and other issues as well. Um, so the dose will also alter over time. So um, if you get better, you'll need less. And if for, for some reason you need more because you have more stress, and you're having more problems, more breakdowns mentally, then you'll need more, okay? Um, but usually if you're getting better, you just won't need as much. All right, now... Um, So Andrew Saul divides people who might benefit from niacin into two categories. First category are people who are well or nearly well. They're pretty healthy and they have no obvious disease, um, but they're just interested in maintaining their good health or improving it. And they may be under increased stress. So they may be experiencing some anxiety. And um, for these people, the optimum dose range usually varies between um, 500 milligrams to 3,000 milligrams, okay? So 500 to 3,000 if you're healthy, okay? If you're generally healthy, you probably don't need more than that. It's for an adult, an adult, okay? For children, we always um, adjust whatever an adult would take based on their weight. So if an adult would start with um, 500 milligrams or 100 milligrams, then depending on, that's like, you know, maybe 150 pound adult or 130 pound adult, um, then you would just divide that depending on the child's weight, okay? Now, category two is everyone under physiological stress, such as pregnancy and lactation, suffering from acute illness, such as common cold or flu, they may need more, or other diseases that do not threaten death. Now, all the psychiatric syndromes are included in this group, including schizophrenia and senile, people who are senile. Um, It also includes a very large group of people with high blood cholesterol levels or low HDL when it's desired to restore these blood values to normal, okay? Because medicine helps with a lot of things. Now the, the the dose range for for these people who are who are very sick basically is anywhere between a thousand milligrams to that to ten thousand milligrams. Okay, but very few people need more than five thousand. Okay, but this you know there's that's the range um, that that it can go up to. Okay. Now if you're taking flush free, um, nice and that range would be um, up to 6,000 milligrams, oh, not, 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 excuse me, yeah, not, um, not 10,000. Now, um, but um, for, for this, you know, for this lesson, you know, I'm, I'm only teaching just one to 5,000, I'm just, but I'm, I'm just trying to give you the complete information that Andrew Saul gives, okay?
Vitamin B3 is a very effective nutrient in treating a large number of psychiatric and medical diseases, but its beneficial effect is enhanced when the rest of the orthomolecular program is included, which we'll talk about. And the combination of niacin and the antioxidant nutrients that we'll be learning about is a great anti-stress program, um, therefore great for anxiety. Now, it's so great. I just wanna tell you how great it is, how amazing the orthomolecular approach is. It's so great that um, that there's a case study which I'll link to in the in the in the sources, and I'll link to I'll link to um, Andrew Saul's um, article about this as well, um, and also the case study um, where in where a middle aged man who had success rapidly reducing fast fast acting alprazolam or Xanax dosage by taking very high doses of niacin. He was able to get off a prescription uh, medication for his condition by replacing it with niacin, al along with GABA, which we'll talk about, and vitamin C. The individual had been on one milligram per day Xanax for two years. One milligram Xanax for two years. And, you know, just go ahead and search all the side effects of Xanax, what, what all the side effects are. Xanax. And if you're taking prescription medication for anxiety or depression, um, I want you to, everyone needs to learn what the side effects are for the medications. Okay. It's so important. It's so important. Um, now he was taking a moderate dose, but for a long time. And as a result, he started presenting increased anxiety, personality changes, and ringing in the ears or tinnitus. Now, these are all side effects likely due to the long-term use of that drug. It's not crazy that he was taking a drug for anxiety, and maybe it worked at first, but in the long run, it started giving him anxiety, <laughs> plus other very undesirable side effects. It's crazy. It was a case with one of my other students. Um, she healed her husband of um, colitis. And her husband, though, he was taking uh, drugs prescribed by um, medical doctors for his colitis, but they, funny, that some of the side effects of the drug were, were colitis symptoms themselves. And they had to keep switching him to different drugs um, because, uh, you know, the drugs, all drugs have side effects and the side effects if you take them for long term, become very undesir undesirable and oftentimes worse than the original condition. Okay, so, right. So, typical withdrawal from the drug that he's taking, going back to the Xanax um, anxiety person again. Um, typical withdrawal from, from Xanax would involve substitution medication, about a 10% dose reduction per week, and it would take a matter of months. A fast withdrawal is a 12.5 to 25% reduction per week on very high doses of niacin, vitamin C, and also GABA. And this individual reported being able to cut the dose 60% down to 0.4 milligrams in just one week. Okay, isn't that amazing? Um, he was able to get off drugs his drug in one week or reduce it six by 60% where normally it would take have taken him months because of nice. The dose was reduced by 90% to 0.1 milligrams per day in less than a month. So in less than one month, he was 90% off his drug and he reported residual anxiety, but that it was substantially less than when fully medicated. After a total of five weeks, it's just a little over a month, the medication was zero completely off his um, Xanax. And by continuing to take niacin, he no longer required medication. Okay, that is the power of orthomolecular nutrition. And I know I, re I recommended a lot of herbs in the first video, in the first lesson, but, um, you know, 
and I, I'm not saying don't. I, I, the holistic approach is to do everything. Everything is to do the herbs, to do the supplements, and to do the diet, and to do the the um the the, the life coaching work, the um, mindset work, to get over your your problems. But um, this orthomolecular method is very fast. Um, is a very fast and affordable part of healing okay so um now so other things mentioned were uh gab and vitamin c but right now i want to jump to uh, magnesium and calcium it's also very important okay um we'll get to gaba and vitamin c also later now let's talk about magnesium and calcium so you can you can use magnesium and calcium they're better together um you can you can use magne magnesium citrate chloride gluconate or other well absorbed um forms um th and this is to aid relaxation um you can try it at bedtime or between meals um dividing the doses gives you better absorption and utilization and if you keep each individual dose small at first and gradually work up to whatever amount you can take without a laxative effect so with nice, and once you reach your upper limit, you get the flush, right? And we talked about the flush with that. With, with magnesium, when you hit your upper limit, you get a laxative effect, okay? And we shouldn't be afraid of these things. These are simply our body's methods of communicating with us and saying, oh, that's enough, thank you. <laughs> thank you for all you've done, but that's enough now, thank you. But until you reach that level, you really don't know um, how much is enough? Okay. Um, I mean, how much your body ideally needs. Okay. Um, now you may not need nearly as much um, as as Andrew Saul takes fifteen hundred milligrams per day or more. Um, you may not need that much. Um, I just take usually, you know, when it comes to supplements, I take the highest dose that I can find from just a regular grocery store, not like online. Online, online you can find some some crazy. Um, High dosages, but you know, if I go to Sprouts or Whole Foods, like a good, a good place to get supplements, not like Walmart. Um, I, I wouldn't trust most brands from Walmart, but go to Sprouts or Whole Foods and get something from there, and just get like a, a high dose from one of those stores. Those are usually, usually that's what I I go for. Um, however, um, so remember, if you take too much magnesium, it can cause diarrhea. So you have to be careful with the dose. So because of this, you can start with smaller amounts and work your way up to dose that's effective for you. Calcium and, and magnesium complement each other. You can start with a combination of 500 milligrams calcium and 250 milligrams magnesium twice daily. These minerals calm the nervous system and magnesium plays a very important, excuse me, it plays many important roles in the body. Magnesium deficiency is one of the leading deficiencies in adults. The world is largely deficient, deficient in magnesium today. Magnesium is the body's natural cognitive agent. It reduces excitotoxicity, and when taken at bedtime, it aids in sleep. It also reduces the immune overreactivity seen with anxiety disorders. In addition, it reduces your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome. So it's great for so many things. Just like niacin, niacin is also great for a lot of things. Magnesium helps relax your muscles and calm the nervous system. And also it's vital for GABA function and regulating certain hormones that are crucial for calming the brain and promoting relaxation. Magnesium is commonly used to combat um, anxiety, poor digestion, muscle spasms, and trouble sleeping. Um, you can look for ma magnesium and citrate, ch chelate, and chloride, um, which are forms that the body absorbs better. Now, um, for calcium, I actually don't take a calcium supplement. I do take a magnesium supplement um, in spray form, it's a topical spray form, um, but you can also take it orally. Um, but when it comes to calcium, I I just eat dairy, um, goat milk. We drink goat milk and we eat yogurt, you know, and kefir and raw cheese, you know, just very healthy forms of dairy. We don't drink, you know, regular pasteurized cow's milk. Um, we, like I said, we do goat's milk because it's, it's more natural to humans. 
um, and also, you know, the fermented forms of cow dairy, like yogurt and kefir and cheese, okay? Um, and then I drink an herbal calcium tea, which is so phenomenal, uh, phenomenal and so much more powerful than calcium supplements. And what the cal herbal calcium tea actually does is it helps you process the calcium um, that you're already eating and already taking naturally in, in, in food, and it helps you assimilate that calcium and just use it better. It is It has been the key to my um, healing me of sciatica and bleeding gums and toothaches and cavities, rem remineralizing my teeth, that I don't have cavities, it healed my cavities. And also um, it, it's helped others of, um, you know, actually it helps people with, um, a lot, it's helped a lot of my students with things that magnesium would actually help them with. Magnesium and calcium, they're like, they complement each other. They they, they do um, very similar things um, with each other, but the herbal calcium tea, which you can get at aruka.com slash calcium, A-R-U-K-H.com slash calcium, the formula for the herbal calcium formula, it just helps you utilize the calcium that you're already taking, and it's so powerful. And so when it comes to calcium, I found that the calcium herbal formula is more powerful than a calcium supplement, Okay. That's one of the few times where I would say that it's more affordable or more powerful than um than a vitamin for what it is. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's magnesium and calcium. Okay, now let's talk about uh GABA and vitamin C because those were the other two um those were the other two um the other two supplements that were mentioned in the case study that I talked about. Um, so for, for, for GABA, now this information is not, the rest of the information is based not only on Andrew Saul's, um, um, recommendations, but also the recommendations of other holistic healers. Um, and if you're watching the video, um, I have them pictured all of them, uh, these are all the, all the holistic healers, um, that, uh, that this information is from. Okay. We've got Andrew Saul, he's the main my main man, uh, my teacher for orthomolecular nutrition on the top left. On the top right is um, is a holistic medical doctor, James F. Balch, and his wife, who is a nutritionist and herbalist, Phyllis Balch. They co-wrote a book together, actually many books, but, um, and I, forgot, I think it's called Prescription for Natural Healing. That's an excellent reference. And then we have on the bottom left, um, neurosurgeon, Dr. Russell Blaylock. He's also an ex one of the few excellent holistic medical doctors out there and he was not only a neurosurgeon um so he knew a lot about mental health and he performed surgery um on people's uh, you know brains basically but he also ran a nutrition clinic to help people heal through nutrition and supplements through diet and, and through diet and supplements so um he's an excellent one of my heroes because all these these men are all um some of my heroes, okay? And we all also have on the bottom right, um, naturopath Josh Axe, and he's quite popular, so you've probably heard about him, okay? Uh, so let's talk about GABA, okay? GABA, um, you can take 250 to 500 milligrams three times daily on an empty stomach. GABA calms the brain for most users, so you shouldn't use, um, you shouldn't combine it with anti-anxiety medication, okay? Um, that's that's the warning that most healers give and also you know it's a lot of time that's also a warning that we have to give for our own um legal uh, reasons okay um but you know i always have to warn my students you know i am not a medical doctor and that everything that you should do you should do it with a medical doctor <laughs> It's very hard to find a medical doctor that will help you off the drugs and to um, use supplements instead. So a lot of my students, they take it upon themselves to um, find the right dose and wean themselves off the medication. It's just how it's done. I have to recommend that you don't do that, but a lot of people do that. I do that as well. Um, anyways, GABA is an amino acid that is responsible for decreasing anxiety in the nervous system. And it also helps relax your muscles. It's used for a number of conditions in addition to relieving anxiety, including 
reducing PMS, relieving insomnia, stabilizing blood pressure, treating ADHD, burning fat, and relieving pain. GABA is also an inhibitory neurotransmitter that can cause a sedative effect. It helps regulate nerve cells and calms anxiety. Anti-anxiety drugs like Xanax and Valium work to increase the amount of GABA in the brain. Okay, so you can take those or you could just take GABA. It's more natural, it's safer, it's healthier. There are GABA supplements available in your local health food and or vitamin store. And another option is to use valerian root and also herb, a tea which I talked about in the herbal um, uh, lesson, the previous one. And this also naturally increases your brain's GABA level and helps calm anxiety. So the point of all these drugs, Xanax, Valium, and the herb, valerian root, is to increase your GABA. Well, another way that you can increase your GABA is just make GABA directly, okay? And also vitamin C. Vitamin C is just an all-around excellent immune booster. And it's, it's something that, oh man, it's like a cure-all. One of my students is a holistic medical doctor. And he said, "What out of all the things that you've taught me, and you know, he's he's taught I've taught him some powerful things. Um, one of them being the herbal calcium tea that I told you about earlier, which helped him with um, back pain, like nothing else could, and uh, also helped him with um, some, you know, a protocol, a holistic protocol for um, glaucoma. Okay, um, but." He said out of everything that he learned, he said what he learned, what, what I taught him about vitamin C, he believes is the most powerful. So um, you can start with 500. I would start, I think 500 is too low. I would start with 1,000 milligrams three times a day between meals. So 1,000, uh, not with meal, between meals. So 1,000, like right when you wake up before you eat breakfast, 1,000, you know, in between breakfast and lunch and a thousand in between uh, lunch and dinner, or a or thousand a few hours after dinner, okay? You shouldn't, it's best not to take it with meals because it increases your iron, iron absorption. Um, so unless you are deficient in iron, it's better to take it not with meals, okay? Um, so it, I think it's good to start with a thousand milligrams three times a day, but, um, but uh, the optimal dose is when you reach bowel tolerance. So um, that means, so for our family, anytime we feel sick at all in any way, we just take, start taking vitamin C. How much? Uh, I personally take 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C um, just when I wake up and right when I go to bed. If I remember to take it in the middle of the day, I will. And um, I'll do that sometimes, even if I'm not feeling bad, just, just to maintain like superior health and Im immunity, I'll take that, okay? Any kind of like little sore throat or like if I cough, you know, I'll take it, anything, it's just anything minor. Um, if I'm a bit achy, I'll take some, that's our what, one of our number one go-to. And um, the, the maximum that you can take for, for an average size adult is 2,000 milligrams every six minutes. That's extremely high. Now, um, but you'll, you'll, that's just how to achieve your max, your maximum dose as quickly as possible. And you'll know that you've hit your maximum dose, your optimal dose, um, if you, if you start getting diarrhea. It's very hard for me. It's very hard to hit, to get diarrhea through taking vitamin C. I mean, I'll take it like every half hour, a little bit every half hour, and still not um, still not hit that maximum dose. It's very hard to remember to take it every six months. But anyways, that's how to determine your maximum dose of vitamin C. Um, but, you know, if you're lazy, you know, I, I personally just would do like 2,000 milligrams three times a day between meals. Okay? You can start with 1,000 if you're scared to try 2,000, but... Um, but yeah, I do. I do two thousand. My my, I liked. I'm comfortable with two thousand, three times a day, and that's for overall immune health. And when you're dealing with any kind of health issue, including anxiety, it's going to boost, um, the effects of your the other orthomolecular orthomolecular supplements that you are taking when you have vitamin C as well. 
Now the best form of vitamin C to get is liposomal vitamin C because the half-life of regular vitamin C is half an hour, which means that half of it, half of the vitamin C will um, be ineffective after half an hour. If you get liposomal vitamin C, um, its life is extended as, as you know, much, much longer. And so it's, the effect will be like taking a higher dose, even though you're not taking a higher dose, okay? It'll be much more powerful, much stronger if you take liposomal vitamin C. Okay, next, I want to talk about B-complex vitamins and additional B6, as well as fish oil, okay? B-complex and B6. B-complex B um, helps out your helps to even out your blood sugar um, if you take it throughout the day. In addition, the metabolism of just about everything you digest hinges on one or more of this group of B vitamins. Um, taken together, the B complex, they're especially safe and effective. The body needs proportionally more niacin than other Bs. That's why, you know, B complex, um, if you get a B complex, it might have niacin in it, but it's definitely not enough for therapeutic use. So extra niacin is still um, valid, as we talked about before. Um, but B vitamins help combat stress and stabilize your mood. Vitamin B6, in particular, serves as a natural remedy for anxiety because it works to boost mood, balance blood sugar levels, and maintain a healthy nervous system. In fact, symptoms of a, of a vitamin B6 deficiency include anxiety, irritability, depression, changes in mood, muscle pains, and fatigue. In addition, B12 is also important for fighting chronic stress, mood disorders, and depression. It helps improve your concentration and, and energy levels and allows your nervous system to function properly. B6, therapeutic doses between 100 and 500 milligrams daily are commonly prescribed by physicians for PMS relief and a few hundred milligrams of individual B6, especially if taken in addition to the entire B complex to ensure balance is very safe. So it's, um, it's a very good um, supplement for neurological, um, for, for anxiety, for neurological problems as well. Um, now, really enormous doses of B6 um, taken alone without the B complex or anything like that um, have produced temporary neurological side effects. And that's when you get up to the 2,000 and 5,000 milligrams daily. And what happens is uh, you get symptom, you can get symptoms of numbness or tingling in the extremities. Um, but with doses as low as, you know, 1 to 500, 100 to 500, um, that's very rare to get those side effects. And such cannot be said for anti-anxiety drugs. Tranquilizers and the like tend to abound with side effects, be less and less effective over time, and are highly addictive. B6 is not addictive. Withdrawal from anti-anxiety drugs is a serious matter, and sudden cessation can be dangerous, even life-threatening. Um, so, you know, um, it's not good to just simply stop um, stop psychiatric drugs. It it can be it can be dangerous. Okay. Um, but um, nutritional supplementation is much safer and easier and faster. So if you already have a medical doctor, you might wanna just simply tell, tell your doctor, look, I, I want to get off the drugs um, and I want to, and I'm gonna start supplementing um, with some vitamins to do so. And um, if he won't work with you to do that, I would just keep looking for a doctor that would, okay? Um, so shop around, you know, you can do that. It's a free country. And then we have fish oil and fish oil is just really excellent for, for the brain. Okay. Um, one, one of the better brands is Norwegian fish oil liquid from vitacost.com. That's what neurosurgeon Dr. Russell Blaylock recommends. And it's been shown to specifically reduce brain inflammation and improve healing with the organ, especially um, the dendrites and synapses. So the dose for um, fish oil is two to four grams a day, and you should keep the oil refrigerated. Okay, fish oil should be refrigerated.
Um, it's 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 really important as a a long term treatment for anxiety, um, and it's just excellent for brain health for mental health. Um, one of my children, um, she's adopted, and her her um, her birth mother um, took drugs. Um, I think it was drugs for anxiety um, while she was pregnant with her. Um, and she had a drug problem as well. Anyways, mm -hmm. so she was born with anxiety problems um, because of uh, the effects of the drugs while she was in the womb. Um, and taking fish oil, when she takes fish oil versus when she doesn't take fish oil, it's very apparent. She, um, she her, her mental health is much better. It's much more stable when she does take the fish oil. Um, so it's really important for for your for your mental health as well. Fish oil. And the fish oil is, you know, it's a I'm listing it here under supplements because it's not an herb, but it's 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 very natural. It's, it's it's I mean you can even take it in fish oil form, but it's very natural, but it's also unnatural, right? Because it, you have to do something unnatural to the fish to get all that concentrated oil out again, right? Now, although I would start with supplements I've, um, we've already talked about earlier, um, I wanted to include the rest of these because, because these are, I, I just wanted to give you the full recommendation that these holistic um, med medical doctors give um, in terms of orthomolecular nutrition, okay? Um, so we have chromium, 50 and 400 micrograms of chromium, um, acetylcholine, 5-HTP, 100 milligrams, three times daily on an empty stomach. That's in between meals, just like the vitamin C. Um, inositol, which is an alternative to regular niacin. I think regular niacin or niacinamide is more superior. Those are the teachings of um, Dr. Saul. But um, inositol is another one that you can take 12 to 18 grams daily in divided doses. So first, the chromium. The, this may help even out the sugar mood swings, is what Dr. Saul teaches and perhaps even sugar craving. And chromium deficiency, uh, which is a daily intake under 50 micrograms, affects nine out of 10 adults. That's 90% of the population is chromium deficient. Somewhere between 50 and 400 micrograms of chromium substantially improves your cell's ability to use insulin. Um, but we're not talking about regular, you know, chromium that's on a bumper. Um, now that's chrome, and that's toxic. We're talking about chromium, polynicotinate and chromium picolinate. And these are the safer and better absorbed forms of um, chromium. Um, also, um, Andrew Saul recommends acetylcholine. This is the end transmitter and neurotransmitter of your parasympathetic nerve system. And this means that among other things, it facilitates good digestion, deeper breathing, slower heart rate, and you may perceive its effect as relaxation. Your body will make its own acetylcholine. Choline. And choline is available in the diet as um, um, phosphatidylcholine found in lecithin. And lecithin is found in common foods such as egg yolks, milk, wheat germ, and chicken liver. Um, okay, also some recommendations um, by, um, I think that if I remember correctly, these were uh, from um, Dr. James Balch and his wife, Phyllis Balch. And uh, uh, and also Dr. Josh Axe, naturopath Josh Axe recommends 5-HTP um, as well. 5-HTP, um, and you can take 100 milligrams three times a day on an empty stomach. Um, that's between meals. Now, 5-HTP um, increases serotonin levels which have a calming effect on the mind. Um, so, um, um, of course, you shouldn't take it in conjunction with a pharmaceutical antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medication, that warning. Supplementing with 5-HTP, which is synthesized from tryptophan as essential amino acids that, that acts as a mood regulator, um, can help treat a number of issues that are associated with anxiety, um, in, including trouble sleeping, moodiness, and headaches. 5-HTP increases serotonin, which is a calming neurotransmitter that transmits signals between the nerve cells 
and alters brain functions that regulate your mood and sleep patterns. Studies show that 5-HTP therapy is associated with significant reduction in anxiety due to its calming effects. However, it's important that you do not take 5-HTP with any prescription anti-anxiety or antidepressant medication. So if you haven't started any kind of pharmaceutical drugs um, for your condition, then um, I, I would try 5-HTP. Um, now let's talk about inositol. Inositol is an alternative to niacin. It's a, the, it's, um, it's a form of niacin. You can take 12 to 18 grams daily in divided doses. Um, the, the benefits um, may be noticed at lower dosages, such as six grams daily, when combined with other supplements used to treat anxiety. And research shows that it, it reduces anxiety and panic attacks, just like regular niacin or niacinamide. A double-blind controlled crossover trial published in the Journal of Clinical Psychopharmacology demonstrated that 18 grams of inositol daily for one month reduced the number of panic attacks from six to seven um, weekly to two or three. It's pretty good. And this is significant since only 70% of patients with panic attacks respond to conventional therapies, respond to the drugs. Talking about the drugs. So it 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 works better, inositol, just inositol works better than pharmaceutical drugs. That's what that scientific study found. So, um, in conclusion, um, I would like to just repeat that the orthomolecular approach is extremely affordable and, and powerful. And um, in terms of taking supplements long-term, um, I'm not afraid of it. Um, I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it as long as you need it, if you need it. I, I, if I needed it, I would take it. Um, I take vitamin C very regularly. Um, sure. It's better to get, um, these, these nutrients from food, but for therapeutic doses, if you have a condition, it's almost impossible to get the amount of niacin, vitamin C, um, you know, B vitamins, et cetera that you need for therapeutic um, effects through food. It's it's almost impossible, okay? So um, that's why they're important. Um, so I would start with the first, the recommendations on the first three slides, which just to recap, again, that was the niacin, one of the most important ones, magnesium and calcium, which most people are largely deficient of, GABA, and liposomal vitamin C, and also the B vitamins, B6, and fish oil. Um, the other ones I think are also good. Um, I probably personally wouldn't start with those. I start with the other ones instead. And um, I'll have the notes for this available in the slides uh, that you can download from aruka.com slash anxiety to get all the resources. Now, um, if you're watching this video and you already downloaded the slides previously, I'm going to include these slides to it. So you might want to download the latest version that'll have the, the slides from this lesson, not just the ones from the from the first lesson on herbalism. Okay, so um, go ahead and get the most current slides to get all the um, orthomolecular nutrition resources um, and recommendations from these orthomolecular specialists, okay? That's Dr. Andrew Saul, PhD, um, James and Phyllis Balch, uh, neurosurgeon Russell Blaylock, and naturopath Josh Axe. These are awesome healers right here, okay? So if you're interested in personal health coaching or becoming a certified holistic healer, um, I invite you to just visit the website at aruka.com, A-R-U-K-A-H.com. And watch out for the next, um, I think we need two more videos, one on diet and another one on lifestyle and mindset or anxiety. Okay, shalom.